How's it going everybody? So today marks the beginning of a new tradition on the channel. Moving forward, the first video of every month will be a topic voted on by our patrons. Anyone in the High Quick Thieves tier or higher will be able to vote on these each month. I think what I'll do is have a vote between three different animals to get a catalog video. One from the Paleozoic, one from the Mesozoic, and then one from the Cenozoic. Those polls will be posted on Patreon on the 10th and go on until the 17th. We started this with kind of a trial run last month, and the patrons chose to start October off with the perfect Halloween-ish topic. The giant vampire bat. Yes, if you didn't know, there was, in fact, a giant vampire bat. Named Desmodus Draculae. Wow, so its scientific name is every bit as on the nose as naming a short herbivorous stem mammal Bulbasaurus leaf razor, huh? Yeah, it's a little basic. But hey, we've never talked about bats on the channel, despite the fact that we have a pretty good amount of fossils for them, dating all the way back to the Eocene. It's really an interesting group that I would love to cover more in the future. But today we're going to be talking about this one species of relatively recent New World leaf nose bats. A group that contains all modern vampire bats as well. So let's kick the spooky month off right with the Paleo Catalog Basics on Desmodus Draculae. The first remains of the giant vampire bat were discovered in 1965 in a jungle cave in Venezuela. This specimen included a complete skull as well as a mandible, but at the time it was unknown whether this individual was a separate species or just a large specimen of the common vampire bat. Usually, when a fossil is found that is very similar to an already known species, Paleontologists will wait until multiple specimens are found before declaring it a new species. Or at least in a perfect world, that's how it should be handled. And morphologically, this animal did bear quite a resemblance to the modern vampire bats we have today. So it wasn't really given much thought. But over the years, more and more specimens started turning up throughout the Americas. And as we got more material to work with, the impressive size of this animal started to become clear. The species name Desmodus draculae was finally coined in 1988, and it's recognized to this day to be the largest species in the Desmodus genus. The remains of this animal have been found from Mexico all the way down to Argentina in six confirmed sites. And even though its name suggests it's some sort of horrific monster, it wasn't quite as large as the name suggests. But it was still three times the size of a common vampire bat. Now this is a really interesting animal because pretty much all creatures that feed on the blood of other animals tend to be very small. Think ticks, mosquitoes, leeches, and modern vampire bats. That's just how they're able to do what they do. If they were larger, not only would it make it harder for them to approach prey undetected, but it would also mean that they would need to consume more, especially in an endothermic mammal with a particularly high metabolism like a bat. So why on earth did Desmodus draculae get so large? Its maximum wingspan is estimated to around 50 centimeters or 20 inches across. That puts it in the same size range as small fruit bats. For clues to answer this question, we should probably look at the world that the giant vampire bat inhabited. Vampire bats as a group are believed to have existed across South America for around 26 million years. During the Miocene, the continent was isolated, so many of the animals were truly unique compared to what we know today. Creatures like ground sloths, armadillos, large caviamorph rodents, and notoungulates lived across the grasslands. And large flightless terror birds and sebeckid land crocodiles filled the niche of large predators. This would be the world that the first vampire bats hunted. And like modern vampire bats, they probably specialized in warm-blooded prey. And as the land masses of North and South America came together, the end result would be a great many of these faces would end up changing on a landscape. Some like the ground sloths, glyptodonts, and notoungulates like toxodon would remain the same. However, some animals like the large predators would be replaced. But whether they were original animals from the south or migrants from the north, the trend that we see is that the amount of truly massive megafauna was on the rise in South America. It is this increase in the size and abundance of large animals that was the driving force behind the evolution of the giant vampire bat. They basically grew to these larger sizes because they could afford to. They had animals with big bodies and more blood to feed on. 
This large body also probably allowed them to spread further south than their smaller cousins, and we see this in the fossil record. The southmost specimens of Desmodus draculae have been found in Argentina, in places where it's too cold for modern vampire bats. So this mammal managed to triple in size in response to being able to feed on large beasts like Megatherium and the rhino-sized Toxodons, even if tripling in size left them more modest than most people would think of when they hear the phrase giant vampire bat. It was still a monster when compared to the rest of its genus, however. But it growing to this size probably meant that it also was dependent on these large animals to be able to sustain itself. And that might be a clue as to why we don't have these little horrors around today. As the Pleistocene came to an end, it seems like the large animals on every landmass were affected. Human expansion may have played a role, or it could have been the drastic climate change going on at the time, or it could have been some combination of both. But regardless, by around 10,000 years ago, many of the megafauna had disappeared. All the giant ground sloths on the mainland were gone. And these animals in particular probably had a massive impact on many other plant and animal populations. Animals like Megatherium were a very big deal in the environment. When you're that big, it's hard not to be. Not only were sloths probably a primary food source for vampire bats, but we now know that the burrowing behavior that some species showed provided shelter for many different bats. And it actually still does. There are caves in South America to this day that we know were dug by ground sloths, tens of thousands of years after the sloths themselves had died out. And you can still find bats living in them. But what you won't find is the giant vampire bat. It is believed by many that without the large-bodied prey of the Pleistocene to feed on, Desmodus draculae followed them into extinction. Normally, that is where this story would end. Today, the common vampire bat covers much of the same range that its giant relative once hunted, but still not able to cover as far south into Argentina. And that is where something very interesting would turn up. Throughout history, there have been stories of larger-than-normal vampiric bats, especially in Latin America. The Mayans had the legend of the bat god Camazalt, and the Mura people, an indigenous tribe in Brazil, have the story of the Kerura, a vampire bat the size of a vulture. Now, considering that most of these are likely exaggerations no matter what, it seems likely that these could all just be inspired by modern vampire bats rather than any prehistoric species. But there is something to consider. Now, as stated before, the remains of Desmodus draculae have been found further south than any of its modern relatives, and one of these sites in Argentina has yielded something very interesting, particularly this canine tooth. When further studied, these remains were found to be dated at around 300 years old, and they were confirmed to be the giant vampire bat Desmodus draculae because of the size, found among other remains that were non-mineralized. This means that Desmodus draculae survived until only three centuries ago as far as we can tell at this time. This blows the theory of them dying out as the megafauna died wide open. Not only were humans around to see this creature, but technically it even outlived the Mayan civilization. So perhaps, maybe there is something to these stories. In the end, it seems that the giant vampire bat did manage to survive quite a bit longer than originally believed. And although there's no concrete evidence to suggest that this hunter still stalks the night skies of South America today, there are occasionally reports of larger than average vampire bats that come from farmers across Latin America. It is entirely possible that these are just over-exaggerations. But the fact is that we're not talking about some giant monstrous animal like Megalodon or a dinosaur avoiding detection for all of these years. This is an animal that has not been gone for millions of years. Or even thousands of years. And if there is anywhere where a vampire bat of this size might be able to hide in the modern world, I would say that the Amazon would be a very likely possibility.
I want to thank you all for watching this video through to the end. And I want to give a special thanks to my patrons who voted on this video. If you want the opportunity to vote on next month's video, perhaps consider becoming a patron yourself. And if you can't afford that, that's absolutely fine. You can contribute by liking and commenting on this video. We have already made plenty already based on comments that have gotten my attention. Hell, even all three of the choices in this Patreon poll were actually ideas that I got from the comment section. But for those who would like to take part in the next poll as well as get access to lots of updates and even have your name listed in the credits, just remember that the poll for November's video will be dropping on the 10th and going on until the 17th. Have a good one, everybody. Is it too late to talk about the chupacabra? Yes.